Que lo que mi gente, what's up everybody, it's your boy J-Rod and welcome back to the channel. Yes, I know I've been away guys, so please do not come for me because I do have people that be messaging me, they be like, bro, like, where you been on YouTube? Because I've just been going through a lot of crazy stuff um, in my life. I've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So um, yeah, YouTube, I really haven't had time to do it, but I am back and I do promise to get back on a regular frequent upload and schedule. So hopefully I can get back to doing my weekly uploads. But um, yeah, so... Today's video, we're going to be talking about five pros and five cons about Egypt. Y'all, I just picked the top five because um, I can really go on and on about this country because I really did love this country a lot, um, but I don't want to make this video, you know, 40 minutes, so I'm just going to get straight to the point. Just pick the top five pros and cons just to keep everything a little bit concise. Uh, real quickly, I am going to be doing one more Egypt vlog video, and then I'm going to do one more sit down and talk video about Egypt, and after that, I'm done with Egypt content. Y'all don't really care for my Egypt content anyways. I am going to a new country next week. I'm not going to tell you where, because I remember what happened last time. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't even think this country... Nah, people still have a problem with this country, so nah. I'm just going to upload, and y'all going to see where I'm at. But um, yes, it is another country that I will be in um, next week, so stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, we're just going to get straight into this video. Enough talking. All right, let's go. So how I always do these videos is... Ooh, your boy looking orange. Hold on, let me fix that. Looking orange as hell. All right, here we go. All right, that looks better. All right, so how I do these videos is I always start off with the cons and then I end it with the pros. So we're going to start off with the cons. I got my notebook right here. So when you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. All right, the first con, the sun. Y'all, I'm not, I can't even, and I, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. When I truthfully say that this is the hottest I have ever experienced Wait, that's not how you speak English? God damn. I'm not making this up. This sun is not the same sun that I experienced in the United States. Okay? You cannot compare what hot is in the United States to Africa. You just cannot compare the two things. Okay? Um, I thought living in the Caribbean was bad. Because, you know, I did used to live in the Caribbean. So, I thought that was hot. No. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It's probably like one step before walking into hell. Okay, that's how bad the sun is. A better way to put this into perspective, like 95 degrees in Egypt will be the equivalent to like 110 degrees over here, like in Texas or Miami or somewhere. Okay, you cannot compare 95 degrees over there comparing it to 95 degrees in the United States. You just cannot, especially a country in Africa in the Sahara Desert, okay? You cannot compare the two. Um, yes, black people can get sunburned. I don't know who came up with that um, myth or a rumor that black people do not need sunscreen. Yes, you absolutely need sunscreen. Bro, it was so hot to the point where, and when I first got there, I only put the sunscreen like on my face and my neck, but I forgot to put it like on my arms. And so um, it was so hot that when I came back to the hotel that night to take a shower, bro, I put it on the coldest water. It was so hot that my skin was still burning. Like after I got out the shower, okay? Like once I was laying down in the bed, my skin was still burning, bro. Please, 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 please use sunscreen when you come to Egypt. Do not wear black, especially when you're in the desert. Do not wear black when you're going to the desert, okay? Um, just please be prepared for that sun. Drink plenty of water. Um, take water with you. Every chance you get to drink water, please drink water. Now, in the evening, it actually felt pretty good. Um, it wasn't that bad. And at nighttime, it felt real good. But the morning and midday, sunscreen, wear a hat, light colors. All right, number two, the vendors. Now, it is expected as an American that people are going to sell things to you. Like, I already have that expectation of being a gringo. I know Everywhere I go, people look at Americans as dollars. I mean, you just can't get, you can't get out of that. Like, you can go to Paris, you can go to Spain, you can go to Italy, you can go to South America, okay? If people see that you're a gringo, people are going to try to sell you things. That is inevitable. However, this is by far the worst and most aggressive group of vendors I've ever seen in my entire life. These vendors are off the chain. Bro, you thought when I went to Colombia it was bad? Bro, Egypt is on a whole different level, bro. The best way for me to describe this is like um, the paparazzi, all right? Like, you know in Hollywood, how the paparazzi, they'll like chase the celebrity and like follow them with the cameras. That's exactly what it feels like, bro. 
Like, you would think that I'm Michael Jackson or somebody famous. And, like, literally, bro, like, when I'm trying to, like, walk outside, I kind of have to brace myself and be like, all right, like, I know they're about to, like, bum rush me. I know they're about to, like, come up to me. So just be ready. Say no. Keep your head down. Keep it moving. When I was in Egypt, the most amount of vendors I probably had around me at one time, easily 10 to 15. Yes, 10 to 15 people around you at once. And they all vary in different ages. Some were like children. And they were just like, please, please buy this, buy this, buy this. And it's almost as if like they're pleading for you to buy something. And I don't really like when people do that. Um, nine times out of 10, when you do that, that actually turns me away rather than me just allowing myself to figure out what I want. But when you're just shoving it in my face and you're trying to tell me to buy something that actually makes me not want to buy something. But I do understand from a standpoint, people be trying to make ends meet, but still that's just not the way you approach people. And um, if you are in Egypt, you definitely got to be prepared for these vendors. They are extremely aggressive. The worst situation I had in Egypt when it came to the vendors, it was my last day and um, I was headed to the taxi. So I was like just leaving a restaurant. And um, of course, they made the eye contact. Everybody knew I wasn't from there. Tons of people just surrounded me. Got like a little kid, little girl. She tapped me, please, can you please? buy this and then you know you got some guys right here they're like please buy this buy this buy this and so i'm keeping my head down I'm like no 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 thank you no thank you no thank you like i'm trying to hurry up get to the car like i'm telling you i'm surrounded it's probably like 15 people surrounding me bro so i get to the taxi as i'm getting the taxi they won't let the door go like i'm trying to shut the door and like they're holding on to the door bro i'm not making this up so i'm trying to get in the taxi and go the guy he like holds the scarf he throws it in my face well he doesn't throw it in my face he throws it like at my chest now I pick it up and I'm like, bro, I don't want this because it's my last day. It's like, I don't need the little scarf. And these are the little scarves that you wear, like you in the desert to keep the sand out your face. And I told him, I was like, bro, I don't want it. And he's like, 80 pounds, 80 pounds. I was like, no, I don't want it. And he's like, 50 pounds, 50 pounds. And so I'm picking it up. I'm putting it back out the window and he's shoving it back at me. And I'm like pushing it back. I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want it. And then I can hear him get really mad. He kind of grits his teeth. And he's like, 50 pounds. And then I like push it back and I'm like, bro, I don't want it. Like I told you I don't want it. Okay, it's okay, go. 80 pounds. Go. It's kind of fat, 80 pounds. Go. 80 pounds. Go. 80, 80, 80 pounds. Okay, last, give me 50. 50, 50. No, I don't want it. Close the door. I don't really care for all that shoving and pushing and getting over my face. That's how fights break out. And it's like, I'm in another country, so I'm not really trying to go there with dude, but hell, he's about damn near close. Now, there is a trick around this if you do not want to be bothered by the vendors. If you are with a tour guide, the vendors will not bother you, okay? So they are not allowed to bother you because the tour guides are working. So these tour guides, they know these vendors and the vendors know the tour guides. So if the tour guide is with one of their clients, the vendors are not allowed to come up to you and sell you things because then that'll be an obstruction, you know, because they're working. So it's like, you're keeping me from working. I'm with the client. You cannot interrupt, you know, like what I'm doing. You do need a tour guide when you're in Egypt because there's a lot of buildings and a lot of monuments and things. You're just not going to understand the context. You're not with a local or someone trying to explain you these things. So I would highly, highly recommend you um, have a tour guide. But yeah, so as long as you're with the tour guide, the vendors cannot bother you. But the, but the moment you step out by yourself, it's free game. So that's just a little heads up. Um, just be prepared for that. All right, moving on. I want to get into the next con. So the next con is the traffic. The traffic is probably the worst traffic I've personally ever seen. I know that this is a pattern in this video. This is the worst sun I've ever seen. These are the worst vendors I've ever seen. This is the worst traffic I've ever seen. But really, guys, this is truly the worst traffic I have ever seen. I'm not making this up. And I believe my driver told me it's like 30 million people that live there. So that makes sense why it's such a high volume of people um, on the streets and the roads. There are no stop signs. There are no street lights. Every man for himself. I've even talked to other subscribers who've been out to Egypt and they said the same thing that this is literally the worst traffic I have ever come across in my life. Now I will say this, the driving isn't crazy in terms of like how, you know what I tell you in the Dominican Republic, you really gotta brace yourself when you're in the car in the DR because people just, they cannot drive, they just drive wild and reckless. They don't drive wild and reckless in Egypt, they actually do drive pretty normal, but it is a high volume of cars. For example, if you're trying to get somewhere at 2 o'clock, you probably need to leave the house, like I would say at least an hour, probably even a little bit earlier than that, just because it is that many people on the road. Like Friday is like their day of rest or like their holy day, so they um how they do their weekends in Egypt is Friday and Saturday uh, would be their weekend. So, Fridays is nobody on the road. Like it's completely empty in the morning until the evening. So that does look a little bit eerie. It's like how how you go from like having this congested city 
to literally nobody on the streets at all. But um, Friday is a good time if you want to get somewhere. But, but um, any other day, you definitely have to plan that out because, man, like the traffic is insane, bro. All right, the next con that I don't really care for in Egypt, this one's kind of like a pro and a con, okay? But um, it's the excessive security checkpoints. Now, I talked about this in my Is Egypt Dangerous video. Um, I talked about how there is security everywhere, literally every block, there is a security checkpoint. Like for anything you want to do, if you want to go into a monument, you got to go through security, museum, security. Um, if you want to go on a boat, okay, like I went on to like the Nile River dinner cruise, had to go through metal detectors. Like it's security checkpoints everywhere, even in the streets. Um, you got to get stopped by security a lot. Like if you're going on road trips, I did a couple of road trips when I was out in Egypt. Um, and you did have to go through many security checkpoints. Um, I do like the aspect that it does make me feel a little bit safer in that country because Egypt is very safe. Um, probably one of the safest countries I've ever visited. Um, safer than any country I've been to in Latin America, that's for sure. Um, but it does get a little bit overkill where you have to like every time you go somewhere, if you want to go into a building or somewhere, you got to go through security. You got to put your bag on the conveyor belt. They got to check it. It's just like a whole bunch of stuff. So um that is kind of like a pro and a con, uh, and it can be a little bit annoying. But so yeah, when you come to Egypt, don't think about doing anything crazy because security is watching. They're everywhere. All right, and the last thing I'll say about Egypt is the camel sh everywhere. Like it is sh everywhere, okay? Everywhere because Egypt, they do have animals walking around freely. You see camels, you see donkeys, you see dogs, you see cats, um, you see horses. Like they, I mean, they literally just be walking around and they be sh everywhere. Um, so you got to watch your step when you walk through the city. Um, I had a couple of close calls where I'm like, damn, like, um, so just be careful when you walking outside. That, but yes, um, the animals, they do like to leave little gifts behind. So um, when you are in Cairo, Egypt, just please watch your step because nine times out of 10, you will come across it. You absolutely will see it um, in the streets and they do try to clean it. Like I do see guys that come around with buckets of water and they do clean the streets periodically. But Still, um, just watch a step because it is everywhere. All right, so now we're shifting gears. We're gonna get into the top five pros. All right, so pro number one, the scenery and the history. Okay, like it is just amazing being able to see the pyramids. Like it's one thing from seeing it like in a book or on TV. Cause you know, when I was in school, I used to see this stuff all the time. But to actually stand there right in front of it, it's absolutely breathtaking. But um, that is one thing I like about Egypt is they have tons of monuments, tons of history. Um, tons of museums like if you like history then i do think you will enjoy egypt because there's tons of this stuff um and that's why i said earlier you do need a tour guide when you go to egypt like i told you if you want my tour guide i can give you his contact information he did amazing and um he does have a reasonable price um everything i did was included like everything so transportation um all my excursions all the food everything was included and so um it was pretty much prepaid and like depending on how long you stayed out determine your price so once again if you do want his contact information just message me either email me or you can um, dm me on instagram but yeah so that is one thing i do love about egypt is the scenery um even when we were taking the road trips like going through actual egypt itself just going for miles and miles and miles and miles through the desert you see like these huge canyons and bodies of water like we drove to the red sea Egypt is a very beautiful place, so that definitely is a pro. All right, the next pro, the people. The people in Egypt are extremely friendly. Now, I know I said that the vendors are aggressive. That's like the only exception, but other than the vendors, I do truly do believe that the people in Egypt, they are very friendly people. It's just a very um, peaceful type of country. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is an Islamic country. So it is a very, very, very peaceful country. And even like the way that the people greet you and if they say something in Arabic, I'm not even going to try to attempt to say it and embarrass myself, but um, the greetings that they tell people in Arabic and um, just how like everywhere you go, like people, they just greet everybody. I did get people asking me like, were they treating you with any type of racism, which I think is kind of strange because I am a black man and I'm in Africa. So it's like, this is where I'm from. So, <laughs> yeah, but um, it's like, yeah, like, but no, nah, I didn't have nobody like treat me bad because of my skin color. Matter of fact, a lot of people thought I was from Egypt. So everywhere I was going, people was talking to me in Arabic and I was like, I don't speak Arabic. I'm not from here. But um, no, nah, the people was good vibes. I specifically remember a time where it was probably like around midnight 
and we were like in this little plaza. All the stores were closed. The only thing that was open was like restaurants. I was telling one of the people that I was walking with that I wanted to buy this oil before I left home. And the owner actually let me into the store after hours. This is like hours after the store done closed. They turned on all the lights. They let me walk through and then um, they poured me up a bottle of wine and set me down. They were just bringing out different stuff for me to try to see what I wanted to get. And um, I just thought that that was really nice because I'm like, damn, like this is after the store closed, like two hours after the store closed. And, you know, like they was giving you like that royalty treatment, like, you know, pouring up glasses of wine and, you know, sitting you down, letting you try everything. I'm like, damn, like, and that actually did make me want to buy something because it's like, you know, they went through all that. But, you know, I did appreciate that they opened the store like after hours because they didn't have to do that. And there was another time, there was my last day in Egypt and I needed to get some food real quick before I went to the airport. So I just ran to the KFC real quick because that was the only thing that was open. Um, everything else, you had to like sit down and wait for the waiter and all that stuff. So I was like, nah, I don't got time for it. So I ran to KFC real quick, got the food, but I didn't want to sit in the KFC because there was too many people. So I was walking outside and then a guy had approached me. He said, hey, like, you need help with anything? And I told him, I was like, oh, I'm trying to find a place to sit down so I can eat my food. He was like, okay, follow me. So he brings me next door to this, um, it's like a hotel and a restaurant combined together. And so I walk in and he's like, hey, like he needs to sit down so he can eat his food. And the guy in the lobby, he was like, well, you know, normally we don't let people bring outside food, you know, to other establishments. You know, kind of it's the same way in the United States. Like, you wouldn't bring no McDonald's into Applebee's or Chili's. Like, it's just, you don't do that. So, <laughs> side note, I felt so ghetto walking in with that bag of chicken to that fancy-ass restaurant. Of course, the black dude gonna walk in with some fried chicken to a restaurant. But no, nah, like, they was being real nice, though. They was real chill about it. So, the guy in the lobby, he was actually nice enough to take my food. He was like, all right, like, we'll take the food to the back. And then we'll just serve it to you on a plate. So it's as if like you ordered some food when you got here. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I gave him the bag. He told me, he's like, just buy like a bottle of water or something. So um, they walked me up to the rooftop of the building and then I sat down and then they came out with the KFC on like plates as if I ordered food from the restaurant. And once again, it was one of those situations where it's like, they didn't really have to do that. Like he could have just said no, or they could have been like, oh, this American, like they think they can do whatever they want. That is one thing I'll say about the Egyptians is that they really do care about their tours. All right, pro number three, the exchange rate. Egypt is pretty cheap all around, um, especially if you're going like as a solo person. Um, I saw some forums where people said Egypt is expensive. I didn't think Egypt was expensive. Um, I remember I went to a restaurant and I think for like three people, we all had salad, we had soup, we had appetizers, and we had entrees, okay, and drinks. All of this for $15 for three people. So that's about like $5 per person. Um, so, you know, I feel like if you got dollars or euros or whatever, like you'd be good out in Egypt. All right, pro number four, the food. Now me personally, I enjoy every single meal that I had in Egypt. There wasn't like one bad meal that I had. Now this could be for one thing, maybe because it was too hot. So, you know, the heat does make you hungry. And I probably was just like, man, forget it. Like, I don't care what I eat. Like you could give me camel and I'll be like, bro, this is amazing. So that could be one of the reasons why, because it was hot as hell. But no, nah, like real talk, I did enjoy all the food. Um, like I said, I don't think there was one meal that I just did not care for. Um, a lot of food, I didn't even know what it was called or let alone even know what it is. If you're not a picky person, then you'll enjoy the food. All right, then my final pro about Egypt is accessibility to gold and oil. One thing you're going to realize in Egypt is that you can get gold for very, very, very cheap in Egypt. Like very, very cheap. Gold is like worth nothing over there. So um, if you do like gold jewelry or silver, um, you can get it for a very low cost. Um, I actually got me a custom made necklace when I was down there. And it's my name in hieroglyphics, but um, it's in gold and silver. And, but yeah, there is one cool thing about Egypt is that gold is very inexpensive in that country. Um, another thing I liked was the oil that you can get. So um, they have oil shops and oil doctors who they specialize in different oils. So you just tell them what you want. So I mean, that oil doctor I met, he can pretty much make oil from anything. So oil if you're sick, oil if you need to go to sleep better. Um, oil for muscle pains and aches like I told him I work out a lot I work out every day he gave me some oil for like muscle relaxing to make your muscles relax so he gave it to me in this jar now I went to this other oil shop where they sold like cologne and y'all like this cologne is really good like here's the cologne that I bought in this bottle right here bro just one drop and then you like rub it right here makes your whole body smell good but bro I get so many compliments from my job or like even outside of work 
Like people that ask like, what cologne am I wearing? I'm like, oh, I got this from Egypt. But yeah, if you do go to Egypt, you definitely gotta get the gold and you gotta get the oil. Like the cologne, man, or the perfume for the ladies is worth it. And it's cheap too. It's real cheap. But yeah, that's the end of this video, guys, for the pros and cons of Egypt. Um, if you do want the tour guys information, like I told you, um, just message me on IG or you can send me an email. Or if you got any other questions about any other places I've gone to, you know where to hit me up. But um, don't forget to like and subscribe and catch me on the next video. All right, peace.